Kirk. Why don't you welcome us back to the podcast? Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Sand Trap Podcast. Uh, no clue what episode number we're on, Josh. You happen to know that off the top of your head? I believe it's 14. All right, we'll go with 14. Uh, definitely been a long break. Um, g- give you a little bit of an explanation here. We came back briefly uh, during the quarantine, did one episode. What was that, Josh? Probably May, somewhere in that time frame. Yeah, right about when uh, UFC uh, started coming back up is when we uh, we had that one and then, you know, it, it just became a UFC podcast, and it really wasn't uh, it, it what was, we wanted it to be. Yeah, it was overwhelming to try and, you know, just just do UFC. Um, I, we've got a lot of listeners I know that follow UFC. They like those picks. But doing just UFC, it, it's not what we got in this to do. We, we like the variety because we're sports lovers. We like doing it all. And, you know, we just didn't have the motivation to keep it going at that time. But, I mean, there's really not a more perfect time in sports to be doing this podcast than right now. I mean, there's just so much going on in the sports world. Yeah, and I feel like I have more inspiration now. Uh, I recently started listening to Pardon My Take More, um, and that really you know, gave me some ideas for what I want to do with the podcast moving forward. Hopefully, uh, we can coordinate uh, getting guests on a little better uh, and have something like something new like that every week. Uh, but, you know enough talking about uh you know what what we're doing uh what led to the podcast coming back um before we get into our rundown here kirk do you want to go ahead and plug the social media for us uh yeah that's going to be at sand trap podcast on twitter that's at sand trap podcast um and we're, we're gonna try and get some more social media stuff going uh, I know we were talking a lot of stuff before the break that we were talking about starting up that just didn't happen because of the break. We do have a YouTube channel at this point. We haven't posted anything up there yet. Obviously, you know, we got that role and we talked about it as quarantine started. Um, and, and I do recognize that some of these sports, you know, baseball, uh, hockey, a lot of these, th- this podcast is not necessarily formatted for that because, you know, we don't have lines for the entire week and everything. So, uh, we're in some serious discussions on the best way to handle that right now. Um, you know, maybe do some daily type videos on YouTube and everything, you know, just short clips with our picks. Um, it, it, there's a lot up in the air. We don't know exactly what we're going to do yet, but, uh, you know, like Josh said, a lot of new content coming soon. We're really excited about it. Um, Josh, you want to go ahead and give us the rundown for today's show yeah, or just, did you just, have something else? Yeah, just piggybacking off that with the social media. I mean, I, just as you were saying that I had ideas like, like, we know our audience. We know who's listening, and it's all our friends right now. Uh, so, like, guys, if if we have, like, uh, maybe maybe a social media correspondent, maybe you send our, send in pics. Maybe not, like, a correspondent, like someone has a job to do that. But, like, you know, maybe we do, like, you know, guest pics for, like, games on the weekend on Twitter or, or stuff like that. Just uh, creative ways to, to get more up-to-date live uh, bets for – events on the weekend i like the idea of of having more content too and that's what we're trying to involve more people there's a you know our friend group is is really involved with this they love the podcast they want to be a part of it you guys have heard from a couple of them you know we've had lawson on here and and jackson so far and they both did a great job we've got a few more who have been talking about it asking about it that we expect to be on soon obviously lawson and and uh, jackson we want to get back on here as soon as possible um, but you know, we, we just, we, we want to grow. We want to grow our audience. We want to grow the people who want to work with the podcast with us. We want to put out more videos, more picks. you know, we enjoy doing this and we want to be able to keep doing it. And the best way to do that is to keep growing. Yeah. And I think, uh, the new investment we made getting a mixer. Now we're able to use two mics. We're not talking into the same mic now. Uh, I think that's going to help with having people in studio, uh, other than just having like, you know, segments like let it ride where, you know, they're sending us a segment. Uh, that was great, but we can also have people, you know, come in. Um, but I think for the rest of the uh, podcast here, um, we can go ahead and jump into uh, a rundown of what we're going to talk about this week. So we're going to start uh, by talking about some of the sports we got into um, as far as uh, things that were going on during quarantine that we're new to. Uh, so we'll run down some bets uh, with those. Uh, and then after that, uh, we're going to get into NBA games. Uh, Kirk's going to touch on NHL. Uh, we're going to talk a little MLB, just, you know, uh, looking at things for the weekend. Uh, 
then we're going to jump jump into the UFC event for the weekend. Hit us, hit you with our guarantees, uh, and then we'll get on out of here like usual. All right. Well, you know, I'm excited to get started. Um, so you know, let's go ahead and do it. Um, first, let's talk about some of the sports we were watching. You know, during quarantine and everything. Uh, like everybody else, really bored in quarantine, looking for some sports to watch. Um, uh, we we tried a little bit of the soccer, you know, uh, Bundesliga, all, all that stuff that was getting going over in Europe. Wasn't a fan. Yeah, just didn't didn't do it for me. Uh, but one that really surprised me that I got into, uh, is something I'd never watched before. Um, our friend Matt actually got us into it, hoping to get him on the podcast pretty soon, uh, you know. Uh, and that's F1 racing. Yeah, Formula One. Um, I mean, it started with NASCAR, really. As far as motorsports, that because that was the first one back, and we started getting into that, and and we really liked that at first, and we're gonna touch on some uh, NASCAR bets too, but but really Formula One really has uh, grasped my uh, my attention here. Uh, I'm really interested in uh, you know all the dynamics, learning about it. It seems like a niche sport that I can I think I can get into, kind of like I, I did UFC. Yeah, I I agree with you 100% on that. Um, so, you know, for those of you that are interested, we'll, we'll go ahead and give you a rundown of, of what we're looking at this weekend. Um, practice starts tomorrow, correct, Josh? That's right. Uh, free practice one and two uh, are going to be on Friday, uh, the qualifying on Saturday, and then the race on Sunday morning. Um, if you just, if we just want to jump right into the, the bets we got, um, I mean, first one off, I got... Lewis Hamilton running the fastest lap. I mean, he has as good a chance as anybody. Um, this is a track that Lewis Hamilton really dominates. Uh, he's dominated in the past, multiple wins there. Uh, Mercedes is the best car by far. The, the only uh, problem this bet you might run into is if someone late in the race switches to softs just to run for fastest lap, get the extra points. Uh, but the way Lewis Hamilton's been racing lately, he's, he's just been dominating. So, Lewis Hamilton plus 162 fastest lap. That's going to be my first one. And for those of you that are new to this, that are just, you know, learning what we're talking about as we're talking about it. One thing I learned really quick watching this is how dominant Mercedes is out here. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, best, best driver in the world. Um, and he's won back to back races. Uh, we're coming out of, uh, Austria and Hungary, won back to back races. Um, he also won here in great Britain last year. Um, so, you know, the, throw the winner bets out the window. You're, you're not going to bet on a winner here. In my opinion, I think, uh, this is Lewis Hamilton's race. I think he's going to win this one. Uh, so I, I was looking for a different type of, uh, you well, got some I will actually disagree here. I think okay. there's a, there's a solid bet to be made for both has to win the race just cause he's in the same, he's in the same car as, as Hamilton. He, I, I feel like he's the only other person that can win. Sure. But you can get a good, good, good line of plus two seventy five. No, that's for for both us to win here. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, if if you want to bet somewhere else and and you're looking for some value, uh, that's probably the bet to make. Uh, but it, but in my opinion, the the best bet to make here, I went with a top three bet. I went with a uh, Leclerc here. Uh, get him at plus eight hundred. Oh, that's a tough scene the way uh, Ferrari's been going. Well, that's true, but Leclerc took second in uh, the first week back at Austria, and he also took third at this track last year. Um, that you know, there's there's only a small list of drivers, in my opinion, that are consistently up there from what I've seen. Um, I, I mean, just unfortunately, I feel like, or I know that at that last year with Ferrari, that's all out the window with with how the regulations have hurt uh, their power unit. No, that's fair, and and I understand that and took that into account. But, you know, he, he still did have a, uh, a a top three finish already um, since they've been back. So, you know, they, it shows that he's capable of doing it. He's a good driver. Ferrari's still a good car. It's still one of the top teams out there. It's, it's not it's not competing with Mercedes, but, I you mean, know. It's not competing with Red Bull or, 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 or Racing Point right now. I, I you know, I, I see that, but... I think they're capable of getting back up there, and honestly, the number is what really did it for me. I can get that at plus 800 for him to get in there. It's not a bet I'm going to throw the, you know, I might throw a unit at. I'm not going to throw the house down on it. It's not something I'm super confident in, but with these type of bets, you know, head-to-heads are normally only within teams. Um, it, it, it's difficult to find bets in this, at least from what I've seen so far. I'm still kind of learning it, um, but th- this is the most interesting one i found so far. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I, I feel like we're in agreement here that Hamilton and Botas are definitely going to be in the top three. 100%. It's um, an argument of who that third will be, in my opinion. And, and, and that's that's the same look I took, had on it. Um, I instead went with the racing point of Lance Stroll. Uh, I stayed away from Perez. I don't know if you heard Perez has coronavirus, so that, someone else is going to be in the second racing point car. That is the first I've heard of that. Uh so I, I'm taking Lance Stroll. He looks solid. He took fourth uh, at Hungary last week. Um, that racing point car, the pink Mercedes, has looked really well. Uh, I like what I've seen from Stroll so far this year. Uh, so plus 400, not as good as plus 800, but I think it's 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 more solid of a bet here for him top three. Sure, 100% I understand that. Uh, that race is Sunday for you guys who aren't familiar with this stuff. Um, you, like I said, I'm still really new to it, still learning it. But uh, I, I'm really excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I actually have two more two more bets here. Oh, okay. Well, keep um, keep us going. Um, so top six. Uh, I have Lando Norris making the top six at plus one twenty. Like that bet. Um, you know, scenario seven. Lando Norris. It's home track. Uh, in Britain, he's performed well there in the past. McLaren. This track suits them. Um, so Lando Norris top six. I think that's pretty solid. And then I'm sticking on the Lance Stroll train. Uh, I like that pink Mercedes so far this year. Uh, and, you know, someone I really don't like and, well, not don't like, but I, I don't like what I've seen from him so far this year is is Albon. And so sure. I got a head-to-head -head, uh, with Lance Stroll versus Albon because uh, Perez is out. Um, so they're doing a head-to-head -head for Stroll versus Albon. Okay. And so I'm taking Al uh, Stroll minus 167 versus Albon. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that as well. And if I can make, you know, this is kind of a weird suggestion, but it's something I just want to throw out there. One of the things that really got us into this is the uh, the new F1 game that came out. Um, F1, uh, what is it, 2020? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it, it, if you're trying to get into it, if you're trying to learn the sport a little bit, learn the drivers, understand what they're doing and everything, real fun game. We're really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really excited to watch this race. I never thought I'd say that about F1 racing, but I'm looking forward to it this weekend. Yeah, me too. I have the whole Sunday off from work and, and, and that's what I'm going to dedicate it to. All right. Well, uh, we'll, we'll move on into uh, NASCAR, which was really the first sport we got into with quarantine, uh, just because it's pretty much all there was for a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, at first, you know, we got the NASCAR heat game. Uh, I think our, our, our sway to F1 is really in the video games. I mean, NASCAR heat four and five. As far as video games for top tier sports in America, it's terrible. Oh, absolutely. Servers garbage. So many bugs. I wish the game was good, but it's just awful. Um, Kirk, I, I, I know who, I mean, I've done research on this race. Uh, I know Harvick has won the last two here. Yep. Joe Gibbs won the th uh, Joe Gibbs Racing won the three before that. Sure. Uh, I don't remember the name of the race. Uh, so I don't either. Something in New Hampshire, though. New Hampshire. It's sure. at New Hampshire. So for that reason, um, I I like Toyota um, to win at plus one forty. I feel like that was the best odds now, for me. To be fair, Josh, maybe we should be a little transparent with this. We are Joe Gibbs Racing fans. A big Joe Gibbs Racing fan. Uh, two of my bets here are, are based around Joe Gibbs Racing. Well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I like the Toyotas here. I've liked the Toyotas all season. They've been racing really well. Uh, three, I think three different drivers for them have, have had a win since we've come yeah, back. Yeah, I think three of the top four drivers in, in, in NASCAR right now are, are racing for Joe Gibbs. The other one's Kevin Harvick and... I also like Kevin Harvick at plus three fifty to win. Sure, and if you know, if I didn't go with the driver I went with, I, I that would have been my second choice. I understand Harvick being the favorite. He races really well at this track. He's been racing really well all season. Um, but I like the value with uh, Denny Hamlin. I see him maybe going back to back here. Um, he won last week and uh, came in second on this track last year. He likes this track. Um, you know, in, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far, he's been the best of Joe Gibbs um, since they've come back. I think he has four wins, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe Harvick's the same. I think they're tied on that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I really like how those cars have been running. I have a lot of confidence in Denny Hamlin as a driver. I think that Harvick and Hamlin are pretty equal in odds to win this week. So I'm going to take the guy where I can get more value and also, you know, the Joe Gibbs driver. Yeah, and and – now the I know um, where everyone likes to make their money here. It's not on uh, betting who's going to win, 
Uh, I have a, a group a group bet here that I found that I, I really like. Yeah, not, another one, by the way, it, where it might be more advantageous for us to have daily videos or something closer to the weekend. Uh, uh, a lot of things we go with with NASCAR all the time are head-to-heads, and uh, head the head-to-heads really weren't out yet. Well, I, but I they, saw some on, uh, when I was on. Okay, I, I did see the group ones. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't go off any of them, but I'm curious to hear your opinion on one of them. I saw I saw head-to-heads on there. I didn't like any of them. Uh, I, I I didn't see any that really stuck out to me. But I saw a group one, uh, just based on that Joe Gibbs train. Sure. Um, Eric Jones plus two seventy to beat Almirola, Kurt Busch, and D Benedito. Um, I, I I like that one a lot because the, the, he's driving in you know what, one of the best cars on the on the track right now. What did you say his odds were on that one? Plus two seventy. Okay. Uh, but but I had another one. I I remember. Um, I didn't write it down, but but Hamlin, uh, Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex were all in a group. Okay. Now, if you they were all plus odds, so I, I'm sure you could work some kind of gambling math magic to bet on all three of the the uh joe gibbs to win that and and come out on top somehow yeah you know how i am with betting math i i like to try and do things like that where i can uh make multiple bets and set it up where i'm going to turn a profit you know (laughs) no matter what happens um okay well that's uh that's all i had on nascar you know like i said really like joe gibbs this weekend if not i think it's gonna be harvick if it's not a joe gibbs driver um did you have anything else on that one josh no, yeah, those were all the bets that I, I had for that. Um, I know the third sport that you actually got into um, during uh, during this break was was golf. I didn't really get into the golf bets as much, but um, you know, I saw that they were playing today. Um, I saw some kind of controversy with Bryson DeChambeau and Fire Ants. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> He's always. A, I I haven't even seen that yet, actually. But I, it doesn't surprise me after the antics he's been in the past couple weeks. So. But but let's hear from you. Uh, what kind of what kind of bets you got for the rest of the weekend? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep this quite brief because I I I'd been pretty successful uh, in recent weeks. It looks like that might not be the case this week. Um. Uh, just because it looks like at the end of the day. Uh, Kepka ran away with it today. Um, that all the early guys were uh, were keeping it pretty low scoring. Everyone was around even, one under, two under. Um, I I didn't get to watch the afternoon, but I thought I had some guys in contention. You know, uh, my DraftKings lineup this week I only ran one, but I had Simpson, Hideki, Reed, Casey, Leishman, and uh, C- Cabrera Bello. Um, all of, I I think my best guy out of those is at two under right now and Kepka ran ran away up to eight so um I, I'm gonna probably have to look at uh the numbers once we get a little deeper into the weekend see if there's any uh top five finishes or winners that I can look at that I I want to throw in late um last week uh kind of got burned a little bit too um I, I made the mistake of taking Tony Fina out of win which uh, Finau just can't seem to do it. I thought last weekend was his weekend. He was up there at the end and, of course, wasn't able to pull it off. If you know anything about Tony Finau, that's not very surprising. Um, but, yeah, like I said, another sport might be more advantageous to have something daily um, or, or get this thing out, you know, maybe on uh, Thursday morning in time for you to make these bets. Um, all, all things being considered, you know, it, it's – not something that we don't see. It's not an issue we don't understand. Uh, we still think we can get you some quality bets doing it in this format. And trust me, this format's not going away. We're just thinking about maybe adding some more to it. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's all I'm going to have on golf here, Josh. Yeah, I just uh, I like Bryson DeChambeau. I know he's always getting into getting into trouble here, but he hits bombs, so he's my guy. There you go. Fair enough. Um, so I guess we can jump right into uh, NBA uh, as we keep going here. Um, you know, I guess we each took uh, three games this weekend that we liked, and you know, since it's you know they're back for the playoffs, uh, also took you know our, our our championship projection here. So in my first game, um, I have on Friday, I have Portland minus two versus the Grizzlies. Uh, I kind of went back and forth on this one at first because I kind of like where the Grizzlies are right now. But I think Portland is desperate. Uh, they got nothing to lose. They're trying to make that eighth seed. So are the Grizzlies. But I think Portland's a little more hungry right now, especially with Damian Lillard, uh, Carmelo Anthony. They got Nurkic back. So 
this game's going to be huge for them. Uh, I kind of have a theme of picking games that only picking games here that, that really mattered to the teams. Uh, so I took Portland here, uh, minus two on Friday. I, I think I think they get the job done. Um, yeah, surprisingly, you know, we we didn't uh, we didn't communicate about these picks at all. But that's my first pick for a game as well. Um, I I had the Trailblazers minus two. It's a it's a must win game for them right out of the gate if they want to make the playoffs. You know, they're back three and a half games um, all, from this team, so they're they're gonna have to get it going now if they want to make it. Um, I, I think they definitely have the advantage when it comes to star power. Um, they had time to get healthy. You know, those they've got guys coming back. They're going to be better defensively. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I think they're a better team now that they're healthy than that record reflects. Uh, the Grizzlies are a good young team. You know, they've got a good core. And I, I think there's a good chance they end up making the playoffs just because of the lead they have right now. Um, I don't think they're the best team to, to get in that slot. I think that's the Trailblazers. But... Um, you, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I do think the trailblazers will be the better team here. I'm going to take trailblazers minus two as well. Um, so in my second game, uh, I took heat, uh, plus one and a half versus the nuggets. Uh, I think in, in general, I think the nuggets are a better team here. Uh, but I think this game means a little bit more for the heat. Um, so, so I think they're going to come out. I think Jimmy Butler's going to have them fired up. Bam Adebayo is a great player. They got shooters all around the court. Uh, um, you know, I think they're going to come out motivated. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're going to come out motivated in, a, in another must-win game here and, and beat the Nuggets, uh, you know, or, you know, lose by one. I think it's going to be a close game. Sure. Um, yeah, that's a Saturday game, and oddly enough, uh, same game again, but I'm going the other way on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm going Nuggets minus two here. Um, I, I think the Nuggets could be a sleeper team in the playoffs. I, I really like what they've had for several years now with Jokic and Murray, and I'll be curious to see how Jokic looks. He, you know, if you've seen the pictures and, and watched him a little bit playing, he, he's skinny. You know, he's in shape for the first time in a very long time coming out there. Um, and... Um, I, I mean, with those starter pieces of the past and, and now adding some emerging players, uh, Michael Porter Jr. looks like he might be a piece that's going to be big for them going forward. I mean, who knows? I, I haven't seen anything, you know, certain on whether he's playing or not, but uh, a lot of people like what they saw from Bowl Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree. I think the Nuggets are probably the better team. Uh, but but I think in, in this game, in this situation, uh, in this scenario, I think – uh, I think the Heat the Heat pull it out because it, it's it's really must win for them. Sure, I understand where you're coming from, but I'm gonna have to disagree. I'm going the other way on that one. Um, so for my third and final game, uh, I got a game that it really matters for both of these teams. Uh, Pacers Sixers uh, Saturday 7 p.m. Uh, huge game. Uh, Eastern Conference uh, ramifications uh, in the middle of the middle of the Eastern Conference. Uh, I took the Pacers with the points here. Um, I, uh, I got Pacers plus five and a half. Uh, I think the 76ers are not going to thrive in the bubble environment. I, I don't think, uh, I think they benefit from their home crowd. Uh, and I think Ben Simmons has a lot of pressure from his home crowd, uh, not to shoot the ball. Uh, and without <laughs> that, he's going to shoot the ball and that's going to hurt his team. Hey, you think he might do a little better shooting without the crowd there? No, I, I just don't think he can shoot very well. Uh, and well, from, I think from what I've seen, it seems like he's been working on it. I mean, he's a better shooter than when he started. In well, the he's a, well, he's in the NBA. I mean, he should be able to shoot some, but that's he, fair, but, but him, him being the primary ball handler and taking a lot of shots is, is not in their best interest. And I, I and I don't think, uh, the, the their style is, is going to work well here. Uh, yeah, I finally went with a different one than you. Um, for me, I'm going jazz, uh, plus one against the thunder. Uh, that came on Saturday as well. Uh, I think the Jazz are really being overlooked and, and underrated, uh, and I think it's going to stay that way for their first few games back. Um, yet everyone's looking at the, the chemistry issues with Gobert and everything. That's been you know the narrative going out there, but these guys are just too good to have to have these lines where they're underdogs in their first two games coming out here. Uh, they, they played the Pelicans tonight. I have not seen the results of that. I had a buddy saying that the Jazz were looking really bad from uh, from the start. 
Um, I, I think they were coming back, though. I, I don't know what the final result was there. Josh, you, you got it pulled up? Yeah, Jazz won by two. Yeah, and I, and I had Jazz plus three there. So, you know, that, that just proves my point right there. They, they shouldn't be an underdog in these uh, these games uh, coming out here. They're, they're way too talented for that. Um, I like the Jazz, and I, I think they're going to win in this spot on Saturday. Um, so now jumping into our NBA uh, championship projections, um, I'll start off by saying, you know, just everybody remembers my famous line from the NFL playoffs last year. Let's I, hear it again. I want Chiefs. Give me Chiefs. Okay. And I rode that all the way to the Super Bowl. I rode the best quarterback of all time, Patrick Mahomes, all the way to the Super Bowl. Uh, okay. So I'm taking a similar approach for the NBA this year. Um, I want Clippers. Give me Clippers. Gosh, I'm taking I'm, the I'm, I'm taking, with you. I'm taking the Clippers all the way. Uh, they have the best basketball player to ever play the game in Kawhi Leonard. Um, oh, okay. Uh, as far as playoff production and, and, and just being clutch and overall, you know, talent at basketball. I mean, I'll give them some credit going up, going up for one season to Toronto and and winning a title is unprecedented. I think you're getting a little bit carried away here, but. And I, I understand where you're coming from. Just sheer willpower is just going to lead him all the way to the promised land here. Uh, so Clippers making it to the to the finals is plus 180. Uh, I have him going against the clear favorite in the East, the Bucks, uh, minus 185. Uh, if you get that exact matchup, it's plus 350, uh, and you got plus 300 for the for the Clippers to win it all. So I mean, everybody say it with me. Set. Say it with me here. By everyone, you mean me. Everyone, everyone listening along. Uh, we're going to say one, two, three. I, I want, want Clippers. Clippers. Give, Give me Clippers. Clippers. Everybody knows it. Um, it's coming true. Uh, it's just facts at this point. All right. I, Josh, I'm with you. They're a deep team. Um, I think it's one of the best defensively c- composed teams that the league has ever seen. Uh, I, I don't know if that'll, you know, on paper at least. Um I feel really good about the Clippers. Um, I don't know that the Lakers are, are going to be able to, to make it past them. I do think they're going to be the two that, that are facing each other out of the West. Um, but I'd, I'd give the Clippers the edge. The Bucks are a little interesting to me. Not 100% sure that they're going to be the ones coming out of that side. Um, I actually still kind of like the Raptors. I think they have a lot of depth. I, th- I think that's a strong team. Uh, the Bucks just haven't shown me that they can do that. So that's the only reason I still doubt that, even though I would say they are the best team on that side of the league. But uh, as, as far as the actual champion, I'm with you 100%, Josh. It's got to be the Clippers. Got to be. Just got to be. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, Giannis is on the other side. Giannis, I mean, he's 6'11". He's a freak. He's the franchise. He's the freaky franchise. But, yeah, I mean, I agree I like Toronto. But, but, but when you got the Greek freak on the other side – the way they've been playing this year as a team, as a whole, uh, I don't think there's much stopping them uh, right now. All right, Josh, what are we going into next? Um, well, I believe you wanted to touch on NHL. Uh, I don't really care much for it. Uh, I mean, I like I like the idea of hockey. Just I, I don't like sitting down and watching it, so um, I don't know too much about what's going on right now. Well, I'm a big fan of playoff hockey, and I'll sit down and watch that all day long. And we're starting right off in the playoffs when it comes to uh, when it comes to hockey. Um, yeah, so tough tough for me to give way too much analysis here, and so I'm not going to do it. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I've forgotten a lot of what I learned <laughs> at, back when they were still playing in March. Um, I, I was following teams. I was making hockey bets. But at, at this point, I, I've forgotten a lot of it. I'm, I'm going to go purely based off what I remember, the little bit I've seen out of their exhibition so far. Um, and, and just try and give you some close lines that I, I think might be a little off uh, this weekend. Uh, first one's going to be the Oilers, minus 150 against the Blackhawks. Uh, second, I'm going to go Canucks, minus 120 against the Wild. And then uh, one where you can get even, I'm going to take the Jets over the Flames. And, you know, once we get to see some playoff games this weekend, see where these teams are sitting, I, I think the smarter choice might be to wait until you at least see these guys play one game that counts. Uh, just because you, you, hockey's such a weird sport where you you don't know what they're gonna look like coming back off of this, um, but yeah, I, as it goes on, we're gonna have more information for you because I do enjoy watching playoff hockey. 
Uh, but but going into uh, this, that that's about all we're going to give you. So how exactly do the NHL playoffs work? Is every team in it? Uh, unfortunately not. My Buffalo Sabres are, are not in it. I believe they settled on 24 teams. So did Montreal not make it either? Montreal is in. Montreal is in. My Canadians. Yes. Uh, if we haven't said that on this the podcast before. The are 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 in on, in on the Stanley Cup. If we have not said this before, uh, Josh is a Canadians fan, and I am a Sabres fan. Um, I now, be- I mean, while you're looking up what you're looking up here, uh, I mean— you can get anything done in the NHL. If I know one thing, you can get anything done with good, with solid, great goalkeeping. And I think Montreal's got that in Carey Price, if that's one thing I know, is Carey Price is a top-tier goalie in the league even still. You guys are still a, a fairly big underdog. You can get you in your first game, which is going to be on the first. That's Saturday. Uh, you guys are playing the Penguins. Uh, can get the Canadians at plus 145. Well, yeah, that makes sense. A couple of years back, the management traded away the entire team except for Carey Price. So, um, yeah, it makes sense that they're underdogs, but I'll, I'll, sh- I'll still be looking out for them. All right. Well, um, I'll, I think we'll move on to the one that I, I, I'm most excited about coming back. Oh, MLB? Yes. Uh, well, I remember on, you know, our podcast way back when, uh, back during spring training, uh, we actually did our MLB uh, championship pre- pre- predictions. Did we, is, is that right? I, 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 <laughs> I mean, barely we did. remember it. We did. Um, I don't remember them. Uh, I'm sure I said Dodgers, uh, best lineup in baseball. Um, I'm sure I said Dodgers or Yankees. Dodgers or Yankees. Sure, I said one of them. Uh, not Astros. Uh, we had a BYOB segment about why the Astros are the worst. I do remember that. Uh, I don't believe we have one of those this week, uh, but that's just because we have so much sports going on right now. Uh, you know, we got a lot of talk, a lot to talk about. By the way, Dodgers keep throwing at them. They keep they keep throwing at them. Yeah, <laughs> they got they got to. Joe Kelly uh, is is the goat. Yep. Goat Kelly. Yep, I'm with you on that one. Um, but yeah, we're we're gonna give you the same thing we did with NBA. We're gonna give you our three picks from the weekend. Uh, Josh, I don't know if you have lines for your games. The games I picked, I do not have lines for yet. Oh yeah, I don't have. Uh, I don't. I, I mean, I can look at something on you know as far as uh, tomorrow. I know Bleach Report. I'm seeing lines, but as far as Saturday, yeah, I've I've got uh, one from Friday and and two from Saturday. And when we get to them, I've got a general idea of what. You know if they're gonna be favorites or not, so I'll throw that information yeah, out even, there. But not even all all of Friday is, is really um, have a ton of odds. Yeah. Do you want to kick this one off, or you want me to go ahead and get it? Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, let's see. You got Clevenger going against uh, the Twins um, on Friday. Uh, Clevenger is really solid. Uh, the Twins have a great lineup, so I would imagine in this game with the Twins being at home, they'd be favorites. Um, so I like Clevenger on the mound for the Indians, uh, with plus probably going to be plus money. Okay. Yep. I, I like that one. Uh, first one I went with is a Friday game as well. I went with, uh, Padres and Rockies. I don't know if you see odds on that one yet. Um, I, I've got a feeling the Padres are going to be slight favorites going into this one. Um, and the Padres are the ones I will go with in this spot. Uh, Padres are going to have Garrett Richards on the mound, who threw five innings, one hit ball in his first uh, first start of the year against the Diamondbacks. And the the Padres also haven't really had any trouble hitting. You know, we've seen a lot of star players that have not been able to make contact with the ball yet. A lot of teams that are taking their time getting worked up and, and scoring runs. Uh, that's not the Padres. The Padres have averaged over five runs a game so far. They haven't been shut out yet in their first six games. Um, I, I see him to keep it rolling here. I think they're going to beat the Rockies in this spot on Friday. That's a good one. Um, now, I don't have necessarily a game line here, uh, but I'm looking at uh, the projected starters for the Rays-Orioles game on Saturday, and it looks like Glasnow's pitching for the Rays against the Orioles. And that guy struck out a bunch of Braves. Yeah, as uh, Braves fans, we, we know he's got it going on so far this year. So if you can look at prop bets there, maybe Glasnow over on strikeouts, maybe bet the under on the entire game there. Because uh, that, guy, that guy's been on fire lately, um, at least in the one game I've seen him pitch. Uh, his stuff looked electric. It was disgusting. He was making a lot of swing and misses. So that's one that I like there. Yeah, uh, Saturday I'm going to go with one. I'm going to go with a very obvious one. I expect this to be probably two minus 250, maybe as high as minus 300. 
Uh, that's Yankees over Red Sox. Um, and, and the Yankees should be uh, pretty heavily favored in this spot for a good reason. Um, projected to be Tanaka coming back for this one. Uh, for first time pitching since uh, got hit with that line drive. Um, and the Yankees bats have been everything everyone thought they were going to be up to this point. I mean, they're they're looking really good. Red Sox are struggling. Um, that you know the they've lost a lot. It's not the Red Sox of the past. Um, I, I think this is a great spot for the Yankees, and I think they're going to have no problem winning this game on Saturday. You see a smile on my face because I wasn't paying attention to what you were saying. I'm sure it was a phenomenal pick. <laughs> okay, I just saw that Colby Allard is now a pitcher for the Texas Rangers. Uh, I believe you remember Colby Allard pitching for the Braves. I do. Uh, throwing meatballs straight down the plate. It was a high school pitcher uh, that the Braves drafted who had back surgery in high school. Terrible draft pick. Uh, but he's now on the Rangers, and he's pitching uh, against the Giants. Neither of those teams are very good, but Jeff Samarge is also pitching uh, on Sunday, uh, and he has a, he's sitting at an 11 ERA right now. Uh, oh, gosh. Pound the over. Sunday, <laughs> Rangers-Giants uh, at 4.05 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss out. I've been on fire with my over-unders here. I assume they don't have that number out yet, do they? They don't, but whatever it is. It can't <laughs> be. It, 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 if it, there's no way they post it at 9.5. If it's at 8.5, I mean, you got to hammer that. Yeah. You have to. That's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's solid. That's a, that's a solid, uh, easy money uh I mean, I didn't put it in my guarantees, but I'll guarantee an over in that game, and I don't know what the over is yet. Um, it was was that your second game? Is that, that's that I mean, that, yeah, that's my no, that was my uh, that was my third one. Oh, your third. That okay. was my third. Yep, that was my third MLB that. bet. Um, yeah, my third one. Uh, I'm gonna go Cubs over Pirates on Saturday. Um, I I really just haven't liked what I've seen from the Pirates up to this point. Uh, they've they've had a couple tough matchups to start, you know, taking on the Brewers, taking on the Cardinals. I think they're two and four coming out of those, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I don't see it getting any easier here with the Cubs. The Cubs are projected to start John Lester, um, and you know, it, if you saw his first game against Cincinnati, put up some great numbers, five innings of no hit ball. Um, I, I think he, if he can handle it against the Reds, he's not going to have any problem with the Pirates. Um, sure. so, you know, uh, another one, I think they'll probably be solid favorites, maybe like minus 180 up to maybe minus 210. You know, mm -hmm. if I had to make some kind of projection, who knows what the odds makers are going to do, but yeah, Cubs are going to be my third pick for MLB this weekend. All right. That's solid. Um, so since we've done Braves projection, beat Rays, by the way, two oh, oh, nice Braves win. <laughs> um, so since we've been over championship projections in the past, uh, we can go ahead and jump into, um, the UFC event this weekend. Uh, that's uh, Shabazian versus Brunson. Uh, I believe that fight's going to be back in the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Um, I mean, we'll, I'll start from towards the bottom of the card. Uh, I only picked four here that I liked. I didn't. I didn't see. Quite, I couldn't push five. Okay. I didn't see five here that sure. I thought were well, good. Let me go ahead and start then, because I do have five. So that okay. way, I'll I'll finish even it out. Um, uh, I have two off the prelims, three off the main card. Uh, first one off the prelims, I've got uh, Ray Borg versus uh, Nathan Manis. Um, Ray Borg has struggled as of late. You know, he, he's lost three of his last five, uh, coming off that split decision against Ricky Simone, um, which was a loss. Um, and and Borg's gotten a lot of tough opponents, but I, I think they might have, you know, put him in a spot here where he can get back on track. Um Manis is, is making his UFC debut here, uh, former TKO champion, coming in at 11 and one. But the the thing that I was looking at, and with that 11 and one record, a lot of the time when you see those guys that have those records that are really successful in the UFC, it's a loss they took early in their career. That's not the case with Manis. Manis lost within the past year, um, and and that's kind of concerning to me when when you're facing the talent he was facing over in these you know off brand places. He's coming to face. I, I, as crazy it is, as it is, Borg's probably the best fighter he's ever faced, even though he's been a champion somewhere else. Um, and and that worries me a little bit. It also worries me that this guy's fighting at one thirty five and he's five foot ten. Uh, you know, you you got to think he's hurting himself in some way to make that cut. And maybe he has a compromised chin. Um, but I, I I'm looking for Borg to grapple with this guy, stay close to him, don't let him use his reach advantage. Um, you know, heart isn't going to be an issue for Borg. Borg goes in there and fights his ass off. 
Uh, so I, I'm going to take Borg here at minus 260. And uh, couldn't couldn't find anything on these um, props yet, but I'm leaning towards this one being a decision win for him. So if that one comes out and it's uh, generous enough of odds where that's something you want to look at, then that that's the way I would be leaning right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I like Ray Borg. Uh, just the way he's been fighting lately, I couldn't I couldn't uh, put him in my list here. I yeah, no, that's on that's fair, and and I understand that, especially. You know, this is one of those situations where they're giving a guy new to the UFC an opportunity to face a guy who's struggling and, it, it, you know, see, see if this guy is really UFC material. I think Borg is the type of guy to do that with because, like you said, he, he's a good fighter. He's struggling right now. Uh, they're giving him an opportunity to get back on track and giving this other guy an opportunity to quickly establish his name in the UFC. For sure. Um, so with my first one, uh, I took Kevin Holland over Trevin Giles. Um, I, I like Holland here, uh, you know, mainly, I think he has more experience. Um, and, and also I'm looking at common opponents, uh, Mir Shart, who's fighting on this card as well. Uh, Kevin Holland beat him. Uh, so I, I mean, he's a little bit of a favorite here. Um, I was stretching to make, uh, make, make four picks for this card. Uh, but you know, I had to, I, I, so I threw Kevin Holland on here. I like Kevin Holland to, to come out and, and win this fight, even though I know in the past, um, I, I feel like I've, I've, I've looked at Kevin Holland to win, uh, and, and he's let me down. I, I think not nah, see, I, I don't know. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have bet him against Brendan Allen. So I'm not, I'm not really sure why I get that feeling about him, mm -hmm. but, but, but I, I, I like him here. I like him in this one. Well, I'm going to cover two of the guys that you were just talking about. I'll, I'll start with the other one where you said uh, the common opponent of uh, Mir Shark. Um, he, he fights on this one as well, fighting against Herman. Um, and Herman's been around here forever. He's uh, pretty much the definition of a subpar fighter, 12 and 11 in his UFC fights. And up until recently, it was looking like he's on his way out. I think he's 39, 30, 37 or 39. I think it's 39. He, he's getting up there. Um, and, uh, but you know, he, he's got back to back wins, uh, com coming off a knockout of, uh, Patrick Cummins. Uh, you know, he's got heavy hands and, uh, Mearshart's coming off a loss by a knockout, uh, to Ian Heinzich. If, if you remember that one, Heinzich, Heinrich. Yeah. Something, something, something. like that. I, I, I know he's a big Eastern European guy who's, sure. <laughs> uh, I, I did watch that fight and, uh, had no trouble knocking out Mirsar pretty quickly. Um, so Mirsar just did not look that good. And for some reason, you know, after a knockout, Mirsar's moving up here. He, he's going to light heavyweight. Um, and I just don't see him as a 205 guy. I, I, I don't see that in him. Um, I, I, I just don't think this is a good spot for him. And, and Herman's got those heavy hands. Uh, he is older. He does seem to win a fight, lose a fight, and coming off too straight, you know, that doesn't look good for him. But I, I think this is a desperation move for Mearshart. I don't think he belongs up in this weight class. Uh, so I'm going to take the underdog in Herman here at plus 140. Um, and, and then going into that Holland fight that you were talking about, I picked that one as well. That's my last one on the uh, prelims. Uh, both have had pretty similar career paths to this point. Both are 27 years old, similar amount of UFC fights. Um, but, but I think Holland is moving in the right direction and Giles just, you know, he isn't, um, I, I liked what I saw from Holland against Anthony Hernandez, got that quick KO. Uh, he's got good kicks, great grappling, uh, has some submissions in his arsenal. Um, I, I mean, I just, I feel like he has the advantage almost everywhere. And with Giles having the gas tank issues, he has, um, lost to Mearshart, who I don't see is that high level of a fighter. Um, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a tough spot for him. I'm going to have to go with Hall in here, minus 225 as well. There. Um, so I went uh, in my next one. Uh, I took Jamal Emmers to beat Timur Balev. Uh, Timur, I believe, is a, a Dagestani uh, of Dagestani descent. He is from the region of Dagestan in Russia, um, which which means he's a wrestler. Uh and I, I don't like that style, uh, and and uh, based not solely off that, uh, that made me lean towards uh, Emmers here. I, I'm rooting for him. Uh, but if you do remember, uh, Jamal Emmers fought 
Giga Chicka Chick Chicka de- Dez. Spit it out. Uh, I believe he's from Georgia, uh, the country. Um, if you remember that fight, this guy is is really was a really unique striker, real high level kickboxer, and 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 and, and Emmers was able to make that one go the distance. He didn't get knocked out. That was on the Odin Sonya Whitaker card. Okay. Um, so that that was uh, a little impressive uh, that he was able to stay in there as long as he did. Uh, I think he has grit. I think he has toughness. Um, if he can keep the fight on his feet, uh, I, I like Emmers at plus 145 here. Okay. Um, I I went with the uh, Luke versus Brown fight. Yeah, I looked at that one as well. Um, and I'm I'm a big fan of what Luke has been doing. Uh, put put some real damage on Nico Price. Got a doctor stoppage in that one. Um, ju- just has so much in his arsenal. He, he's got a great ground game on top of that striking. I think he's got multiple ways he can win the fight. Um, I, I think he needs to um, the the best shot for Brown. You know, not not to disrespect Brown. I think I think the best shot for him is gonna try and keep Luke on the outside, uh, use his length as advantage. I I just don't see him being able to do that for the entire fight though. Uh, Luke is a really good fighter. I think he's gonna get on the inside, uh, start getting some strikes on him. Probably eventually get this to the ground. Um, I, I see Luke getting control of this fight. And I, I think he's going to win this one inside the distance. Um, like I said, don't don't have props yet, so I don't know what that's looking like. But straight up, I would take Luke here at minus 200. Well, I, I like Luke a lot as well. Um, I think what Luke does best is he's a, he's a great counter puncher. Um, but I see this fight against this Randy Brown character as a, as a step backwards after beating Nico Price. I, I agree. Think, I think minus 190 is, is, is pretty generous I, I think it's, i think it's almost a step backwards from mike perry exactly so if we, if we go back to 2018 uh nico price the guy that luke dominated knocked out randy brown in the second round and and you know randy brown's gone on a two-fight win streak now against you know questionable characters like warley alves and ryan barbarina like those, those are, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think Luke's beaten Barbarina as well, so that so, doesn't really say anything. I mean, they might see Randy Brown as a as a as a guy that that's that's up and coming and 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 on his way up, but I think Vicente Luque is is a real tough fight for anybody. The way the way he 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 strikes is counter punching, and he's also well rounded. Um, I don't see really a flaw in his game that Randy Brown's going to be able to exploit. No, like I said, the, the only thing I see that Randy Brown, the only thing that I think he has is reach, which doesn't really mean anything when you're facing a counter puncher that's going to fade the punch and then get on your inside. Yeah, he's going to get out of the way and, and get where he needs to be. Right, so I just I don't see that working for him, but, you know, I, I think that's the only strategy he's got to win this fight. Really, I mean, you know, I like Luke here a lot. At minus one ninety, I don't believe I made it a guarantee, but, um, you know, I I I really like this one. So if if anybody's looking for UFC bets, minus one ninety for Luke is, is is a great one in my opinion. And then of course the main event of the evening, uh, Shabazian versus Brunson. Joshua, get us started on that one. Yeah, I mean Shabazian, he's so well rounded. Uh, I don't see. Where Derek Brunson is going to be able to take advantage of him, um, I mean Shabazian, he's, he's this great young up and coming fighter. Uh, I think I think he has a significant talent advantage. I think the only thing Brunson has here is experience, but I don't think that's going to help him with with such a large gap in in actual skill level here. Um, you know, so I like I like Shabazian pretty easily here, just based on what I've seen from Brunson as of late. Uh, and, and the trajectory that, that Shabazian is on. Yeah, and I, I don't want to disrespect Brunson here. I, I do like Brunson. He's a good fighter, very heavy hands. Um, and uh, I, there is some fair criticism about his chin, uh, but but he's definitely got a puncher's chance. You know, like I said, heavy hands. If, if he connects with him, he, he could win this fight. Uh, I think I saw something last week where he came out saying that he's not a gatekeeper. Well, he he's, doesn't, the, he's the definition of is, a gatekeeper. This is a gatekeeper fight. I've never seen more of a gatekeeper well, he fight. Did the, he did the same thing with Adam Sonia. So. Right. And this is this is going to be the guy that they're grooming to try and go up against Adam Sonia. That, that's the plan as of right now. Um, and I think it's a good plan because I don't know how you don't take Shabazzian against 
anyone in that division right now except maybe Adesanya. Well, I, I could see how you might take, you know, maybe like Robert Whitaker. I mean, maybe could, I could see you taking uh, her man. Would you? You at this point? I mean, if he had to fight him tomorrow, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I want Shabazian to get some more. Uh, get some more fights in the UFC before he goes against someone uh, of that caliber. Sure, but I don't know what you've seen from Shabazian that makes you think you can pick against him. Crisp striking, great boxing, great kicking. He can choke you out. I, I, he, no, I'm not saying the skill isn't there. I'm just saying, you know, there's a reason that that he didn't walk into the UFC and they give him a give him a top five guy. You got to work your way up. Right. And you got to work your way up because you got to get the experience. So if he was fighting someone like Hermanson or... Cardinier or or Whitaker or even Darren Till tomorrow, uh, you know, I, I might have to I'd have to pick against him in, the, I in mean, that case. I mean, that's going to be the next step if he that's wins the next this fight step after this one. But he has to have this one first. Sure, I, that's actually a really interesting one you throw out there. Maybe Darren Till after this. I think he, I think after this he's two fights away from a title fight. Um, possibly if he's following the same traje- trajectory of Adesanya, that wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibility. Um. But yeah, I, I I like him everywhere here. Um, you know, we can debate on whether he's ready for that next level talent yet or not. I think we both agree though that Brunson is not that next level talent at, no. at this point in his career. Uh, like I said, all the respect in the world for the guy. Uh, Got to give him a puncher's chance at least with as much talent as he has. But this is Shabazian's going the other way. It's opposite trajectories right now. And so yeah, I'm I'm on Shabazian here at minus three forty. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um. Now that we've gotten through everything, that brings us to our guarantees. Um, Kirk, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first here on the guarantees? Yeah, I'll go ahead and go first. Um, first one's going to be an NBA pick. Uh, it's going to be the Trailblazers minus two at the Grizzly, uh, against the Grizzlies. I guess they're not at anyone at Orlando. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Trailblazers minus two. Like, like we said, I think it's a must win for them. Uh, obviously the Grizzlies want to win it as well, but I, I think being a healthy team and, and having everyone back and the advantage of star power, you, you got Willard, you got McCollum, you, you know, you, you got your guys down low back in there. Um, Carmelo. I, yeah. Don't forget Carmelo. Skinny Mello. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I can't pick against him in the spot. I think minus two's, uh, a little low and it's something I'm going to be looking to take advantage of. So yeah, I'm going with the trailblazers for my first guarantee. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Formula One. Um, Lewis Hamilton's going to win the race on uh, on Sunday. Spoiler alert. Uh, I, I, really, guarantee, I really hope that's not your guarantee. It's only minus 228. Is it really? For for him being the race winner. I mean, if you're thinking NASCAR, you'd never take you'd never take a guy like that to win. That's to actually, win, I to win the race. it was a lot worse than that. No, it's actually not. So minus 228, I mean, he's the favorite, but... I mean, it's not astronomical odds where you can't make money there. I mean, he's going to win. He's going to win the race. I, I mean, it's it's just facts. Unless unless his car explodes, he's winning the race. Yeah, that's fair. Um, okay. Yeah, my uh, my second one is going to be out of the MLB. I'm going to do a uh, two team parlay for my second guarantee. Fair. Um, and that's going to be the Yankees over the Red Sox and the Cubs over the Pirates. Uh, two very good pitchers going against two very bad teams, in my opinion. Um. Uh, I, I think John Lester and uh, Tanaka are, are going to get it done here. Um, Yankees have looked really good. Uh, good pitching spot for the Cubs. So, uh, I, I like I said, don't have odds on that yet. But based on a round where I think the numbers are going to be, I think that's going to be sitting around an even bet when you uh, parlay those two. That sounds solid. I love parlays. Um, I, in the middle of our guarantees, I got, I got a text in our group chat. Apparently, Parker saying, my guy Bryson DeChambeau said in an interview that he wants to live to be 130 years old. Kirk, what oh, do you make of that? Goodness. I I don't know what to make of a lot of the things that DeChambeau does. That guy's a character, but uh, I love it. I, he's probably my favorite guy out there on the tour right now. Really, really entertaining guy. Um, so I, 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 I really wish I knew the context of that. I do too. <laughs> Um, so for my second guarantee, I, I, I went back to the NBA here. Um, heat versus Nuggets. I already told you I like the Heat. Um, but I'm taking the over 210.5. I, I like the overs here. I, I think coming back, um, I, I think the overs are going to hit more than the unders. I think a lot of these teams are going to be lacking on defense, you know, at the beginning here. 
Uh, I, I like that bet, Josh. Well, yeah, I mean, in the first game that we saw, we saw um, that happened tonight was the, the Jazz and the Pelicans, and the under hitting that one. But I think the line was set really bad in that one, just base, basing that on the Jazz being such a good defensive team. I believe it was like at, at 228 and a half. I think that was too high for that game. So I would have taken the under there. But but this is so low at 210 and a half. Heat Nuggets uh, in, in a must-win game for the Heat. Um, you know, I... I Minus one ten for the for the over here. Uh, I guarantee it. Okay, and then uh, my last one's gonna be UFC. Got another parlay for you, another uh, two two guy parlay, and I'm gonna parlay the uh, co-main and the main. I'm gonna go Luke and Shabazi in here. Um, that one's gonna be right around even odds as well. Yeah, I, I love the UFC parlays. I, I didn't hit you with one this week because I, I didn't love the card as far as uh, as as a betting betting card. Also didn't mention this, uh, and I don't think it's going to end up playing a factor, but I believe that Shabazi and Brunson fight, even though it's the main event, since it's on short notice, it is still a three-round bout. Yeah, and I, I factored that in here to, to my last guarantee. Um, you know, I, at first I was thinking, you know, five rounds, there's no way this goes the distance. Uh, but then I said, you know, it's only three rounds. There's still no way this fight goes the distance. <laughs> uh, I guarantee Edmund Shabazian will get the job done within three rounds here. Um, you know, whether he knocks him out, chokes him out, breaks his arm, I, I, I like Shabazian here a whole lot. I, I was going to say, even if you're the one guy out there that's going Brunson, if you think Brunson's going to win, his only path is via KO, in my opinion. I oh, don't yeah. think he's going to win a decision here. He's not going to outpoint Shabazian. So, you know, I, I think regardless which way you go inside the distance is the play. I mean, his only he has two strategies here. Um, he can try and wrestle Shabazian. That's his background. He can try and wrestle him and hold him down. I think that would be a poor choice. I don't I think it would work. Yeah. Um, or he can, you know, rely on that the power in his hands, throw some overhands, uh, fake like he's shooting for a takedown, throw an overhand, just like, you know, classic wrestling, boxing combinations, uh, and knock him out. Um, and I think that's his only path. So not going the distance here, I think, is is is, is a solid bet. Uh, and that's why uh, I'm going to have to guarantee it. All right. Well, I, you know, generally agreed. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of content. I know we kind of rushed through it this, uh, this week. Just there's so much to cover. Uh, we were trying to get to everything. Looks like we're going to be just inside an hour finishing up here. Well, that's about right where we want to be. Yeah, I agree. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited about some of the stuff this weekend. Um, going to continue working on advancing the podcast and everything. Um, I, I'm really happy with what we're doing here, though, Josh. Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait to get some guests on the podcast. We couldn't coordinate it very well this week. Um, I think I'm it's sure, good I'm sure for us could, to— I'm sure we could have gotten somebody on. I think uh, it's good for us to reopen with just us, though, to get it, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. back and going. But, but I think, you know, you know, whoever wants to be on the podcast, I mean, you don't have to be in our group, group text. <laughs> Uh, I don't know who else listens to it. Maybe our father. Yeah. <laughs> um, that'd be an interesting interview. I don't know um, if anybody wants to hear that or not. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Now, if he listens, he's going to ask. <laughs> well, now I shouldn't have said it like that because now he's going to be like, what, you don't want me on the podcast? <laughs> and then he's going to say something about how he's profan. Uh, if he's listening, yeah. he'll get that. Oh, gosh. Um, all right. Uh, well, let's let's go ahead and, and get out of here on, on that note. Um, uh Go and give us a follow at Sandtrap Podcast on Twitter. Uh, once we have some information, I I, I think I, I know I've said it a few weeks now. I'm really going to make an effort to get this uh, this episode up on YouTube this week, um, just so that you guys can uh, uh, follow. Give us a follow on YouTube as well and subscribe to us. We have a YouTube um, channel. Uh, we do, but I haven't put anything on it yet. So first time hearing about it. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna oh, to get it. Oh, Kirk, Kirk, get, 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 that reminds me. Everybody wants to hear the Zilla say, yeah, let, let, let's, hear, let's, get a, let's get a yeah to close out the, close out the podcast. Yeah. Uh, um, Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, so get, give us that follow at Sandtrap Podcast. We're going to get you some more content here soon. Uh, I, I'll put the YouTube stuff up on there. Josh, go ahead and get us out of here. Thank you for listening. This has been...